you know, one of the things that the Biden administration, when they came in, their their primary goal was to get uh, people vaccinated, get kids back in school, churches back open, you know, get people like the, the normal economy going again, right? tackle unemployment, and, and get mainly the infrastructure bill and, of course, the rescue package that they got through, which they got through without any concessions. Um, and the infrastructure bill itself um, was something that Trump touted he was going to do, he was for, and yet could never manage even when he had total control. So we have a 50-50 split in the, uh, um, in the Senate and still managed to get more than a filibuster's, uh, you know, beating coalition of Republicans to sign on to it. Um, and again, one of the only reasons Trump didn't get his infrastructure package passed is because he would have needed Democrats to do it. And Democrats could have said, yeah, we worked with him on the stuff that's valuable to the country. And that would have undermined his whole story that he tells everybody. So he just didn't do it. Because screw the country, it's about his pride. And now, apparently, after, uh, you know, Tucker Carlson, all these guys have noticed that the, the number of people at the border is going down, partly because of uh, shifts in policy, partly because it's friggin' winter, um, that uh, apparently there's something else going on. That suddenly, they care about borders. This is what Tucker says. Let, shall we see? Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, there's nothing more tiresome or predictable than a case then you're opening monologue as being gibberish and uh, sort of veering all over the place. Well, news host who makes the show about himself. Narcissism is to TV people at Black Lung is to coal miners. We do our... What? ...to avoid catching it. But tonight, we're going to break our rule and tell you about something pretty interesting that happened to this show a couple of days ago. Oh my God, he talks about his show all the time. What do you mean, break the rule? Jesus Christ. They were coming after you. Remember, you were being, you were going to be blackmailed. Remember this nonsense last year? The administration was going to use it to like ruin the show, and it boosted the the ratings for about three days, and then it didn't go anywhere. And then he was clearly in negotiations with Fox, and instead of giving him a raise, they gave him that stupid Fox Nation show that nobody watches on a paywall fucking Fox site. Jesus. On Tuesday, we did a segment about the nation of Ukraine. Now, Ukraine may be a perfectly nice place to visit, but you wouldn't think it would get a lot of attention from a superpower like this one. Ukraine's a- What? What do you mean it wouldn't get a lot of attention about it? Huh? Why not? Dude, the Rudy was over there making energy deals. That's where he bought the fake Hunter Biden laptop hard drive. Pretty small country, really. It's in Eastern Europe. It's 5,000 miles from Washington. It's got a population about the size of the state of California. So hugely significant? Not really. Yeah, it is. It's it, it it's a, a breakaway republic that wants to stay democratic that is siding with Europe. And it borders Russia. And Russia is trying to, and has been trying to kill that for a long time. See, a lot of times, I don't know if you know this, Tucker, but um, as Americans, we actually give a shit about democracy, especially when people take it upon themselves. You know, it's a little rough when we go to a country that we think should have democracy and we spend about, oh, I don't know, 20 years. It's been a while because we just got out of one. Um, I, I forget which president got us out. But in that time, you know, we were trying to establish some sort of democracy. Meanwhile, here's another country that wants democracy itself is being undermined by Russia the entire time, who we, we allegedly are in the UN with. We, we engage in trade partnerships with them and other people around them. And, and we let this slide. I don't know. Uh, now, Tucker apparently thinks that that's good. That Russia's absorbing of all of its former satellites would be better for him somehow. Hmm. And yet we never seem to stop talking about Ukraine. As the Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden himself spent an enormous amount of his time meddling in the internal affairs of Ukraine. And because of his influence in that... Meddling? Meddling? You mean on behalf of the Biden administration uh, or the Obama administration when he was sent over there to do that? He was made the point person? Meddling? I see. I'm sure his son Hunter got a job at a Ukrainian company and got rich from that. Then Donald Trump was impeached for speaking on the phone to an official from, yes, Ukraine. Oh, I'm sorry. He was just, he was just impeached for speaking to them? 
Oh my God, it must be a terrible place. You can't even talk to somebody from there. You get impeached for that. It's incredible. Did he uh, did he actually use words or did he just talk like Charlie Brown's teacher? Just that's enough. Just impeach him. And now, I don't know what he as said. tonight, we're moving closer to a war over Ukraine. In the coming, or we're uh, getting closer to it because Russia is about to try and invade a country that they invaded during the uh, Obama administration, and the Republicans apparently thought that was like an example of total weakness on the Obama administration's part, thought we should have fought back, thought we should have made a bigger deal out of it. Now they want to do more of it. They're like, I don't know. I, do that. I like the cut of this Putin guy's jib. Russia may violate Ukraine's eastern border, and this, we are told, cannot stand. In Washington, the territorial integrity of the United States means precisely nothing. Walls are racist. We're a nation of immigrants. But the territorial integrity of Ukraine, that is something we must fight for. Yeah, that's that's totally the same thing. Immigrants coming into a country uh, versus hundreds of tanks. Tell you what, Tucker, when Mexico starts stationing 150,000 troops, tanks, anti-aircraft missiles, and starts building a runway that points towards Texas, well, then I'll get nervous. Immigration and a material invasion by a military force are kind of different. I, I don't know if you can tell the difference because you're stupid. Watch as a remarkably broad spectrum of political figures appear on all three cable networks to explain that if Russians cross the Ukrainian border in an undocumented caravan, we have the moral obligation to use force immediately. Y yeah, that is, they're not just walking. They would be literally in tanks, you dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> We will move NATO assets closer to Russia, not further away, yeah. uh, if they once again bring war to Ukraine. It's yeah, if they once again bring war to Ukraine. And by the way, this says more about Tucker Carlson than it does about any of the people that he's showing. Because Tucker Carlson thinks brown people crossing the southern border, legally or not, is war. It's not going to be that simple. I think... We should be doing a lot more and we, we shouldn't be just considering a diplomatic track. There needs to be clear consequences for what they do because we failed to deter and now you're inviting conflict. It's a, it's a, it's a very bad situation and we've, and we've left ourselves without many options as a result. I don't think we're providing the deterrence necessary to stop Putin from invading Ukraine, the breadbasket of Russia. And it's time for the Biden White House to start speaking more clearly and more aggressively and telling us how they're going to stop this invasion from happening. Oh, they're all red in the face, but it's not the usual partisan chorus. This is the entire choir. You just saw representatives from every- Well, yeah, I mean, obviously they don't need another Soprano. Faction in Washington, from Adam Schiff to Dan Crenshaw, not as different as they seem, and all the dummies in between. Yeah, by the way, Dan Crenshaw is basically a Democrat, according to them. Just put a pin in that for a while. Just, yeah, just brrr, try a red line. And in this bizarre, in his head, um, you know, tracking a serial killer wall that he's put up with red string going from all these different people connecting all the dots, like... Like a, like a cracked out Glenn Beck. Tucker's convinced that anybody who's not directly getting support from Hungary or Russia is clearly out to destroy these countries. And all of them are promoting war against Russia on behalf of our new and deeply beloved ally, the government of Ukraine. Uh, no, they aren't. None of them are, are asking for war. Where, where did any of them say... We got we to gotta go across the border before they do. Not a single fucking one. Not anybody. Like, this is, this is infantile. Vladimir Putin is our most dangerous enemy, they scream. We can't let him hurt Ukraine. Well, he's the most militaristic one. I don't know that he's our most dangerous. I think arguably Kim Jong-un would be, but uh, his, his missiles, as much as he tries them out, never seem to fly very far. Hmm. So it turns out Russiagate was actually more effective even than we'd realized. The steel dossier has been debunked. But it, no, it hasn't. Washington, the theme remains in force. Russia, 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 Russia is bad. You know that you, you do know they are currently amassing troops on a border. 
They didn't just fucking pull this out of nowhere. Nobody, nobody was thinking about invading Russia or sanctioning them anymore until this shit started happening. Again, none of the people he showed, none of the people, you know, these discussing in this thing said, you know, sight unseen that we need to go after. As a matter of fact, weren't these guys saying that Biden's going too soft on Putin by allowing the Nord Stream to go through? It's the same friggin' argument from Cotton. What is this about exactly? Yeah, what is it about? It couldn't be about freedom or democracy or the sanctity of Europe or the safety of it or the encroachment of a, uh, a gangster klepto uh, kleptocratic maniac onto uh, former Soviet republics as he pushed into Belarus and sort of took over their, uh, undermined the democracy there the way he tried to do in Ukraine and failed. And he's trying to spread that to a bunch of other countries. Obviously, it's the usual collection of children falling for the usual collection of lies. But why this specific lie? On Tuesday, we tried to get to the bottom of this because it seems like it matters. We spoke oh, did you? to a man called Clint Ehrlich. As Ehrlich pointed out, there are a lot of factors here driving us toward war over Ukraine, but one of them, a central one, is NATO. So what is NATO and what is the purpose of NATO since the fall of the Soviet Union 30 years ago that NATO was designed as a bulwark against? Well, no one can answer that question. Yeah, they can. The dude who actually runs Russia right now is, a, is an oligarchical kleptocrat mafia-like boss that's worth $200 billion, even though his, his salary is 140 k US. And they're selling uh, missiles and missile technology and weapons to the Iranians and therefore throughout, you know, uh, the Middle East uh, terrorists are firing AK-47s. That, uh, that's why. And if they continue to do it, they're just going to use whatever resources they get and whatever land they take over to exercise that much more control one person and yet the same people who cooked up the iraq war are now yes it's the same people insisting that ukraine must join nato anyway no they aren't no they aren't the suggestion that ukraine joined nato was back in 2008 they just haven't rescinded it it was an invite that's up to ukraine that would mean putting american military hardware right on russia's border and russia doesn't want that yeah they don't want that would you want that i mean you're putting your military shit on their border, but if they did it too, terrible. More than we would want Russian missiles in Tijuana, hence the tension. Now the irony, as Clint Ehrlich pointed out, is that NATO doesn't even want Ukraine to join. In other words, the whole thing is nuts. It serves no American interest whatsoever. It is yet another manufactured crisis, this one devised by restless power-hungry neocons in Washington looking for another war. Oh, right. Yeah, they, 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 it was all part of this great plan they had to force Russia to all of a sudden decide to amass troops on Ukraine's border. It's, a, it's like ninth level chess. Here's part of what Clint Ehrlich told us. Here we have people who are arguing that even if the Russians don't uh, invade Ukraine, that we need to invade and kick the Russians out of Crimea. That was an op-ed from a senior Obama administration official this week. Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of thought about all of this. They shouldn't have been able to take that land from the Ukrainians before. They did. A lot of people are still grinding on that. The fuck does that have to do with the Biden administration's policy or the fact that we have to deal with, with Russians building up forces on the Ukrainian border to take the whole country? Who gives a fuck about op-eds? Oh, God. So I would say that it's even simpler than that. We're dealing with our warmongers, unserious people whose policy prescriptions could have deadly serious consequences. The deeper irony is that NATO doesn't even want Ukraine, that it's a corrupt country. It's more of a liability than it would be a military asset. And the people who are pushing that. No, no, no. It was a corrupt country. And then we started working with them and our their, their new president's a fairly solid guy. The, the last one, though, who, of course, was uh, supported by a guy named, uh, what was his name? Uh, Paul Manafort. I don't know what that guy has done since he worked for the Ukraine, um, you know, and his daughters disowned him because he was the guy behind putting snipers on towers and shooting at, uh, at protesters when agent provocateurs would create artificial riots within the group, giving them a pretext to murder people. Um, I don't know what he's done since.
simply argue that it needs to happen because Russia shouldn't have a veto over who's in NATO. In other words, even when it's in our mutual interest to not have a state in NATO, we have to insist that they'll be added just to spite the Russians. Well, that was an interesting conversation. Well, that was an interesting conversation. Why would you even think about that? And it's just, it, and the fact that we invited them in eight years ago, all of a sudden, Russia's putting troops on their border. I mean, it's it, it, like, it, the line between those two moments is like this. Those seem like fair points. If they're wrong, go ahead and explain how they're wrong. Well, they're wrong. There was no point in this where NATO was deciding to make a move to include Ukraine. In the last little bit with the, with the U.S. normalizing their relationships with Ukraine had nothing to do with this either. This has to do with the fact that Russia had sock puppets in charge of the fucking country. Biden kicked those sock puppets out. Eventually, it got all the way up to the presidency. They were able to have a real election. Now Biden's president and Ukraine actually has a functioning, non-corruptible government in its current form. So they just have to physically take it. Because their plan to gut it from the inside fell apart. This has nothing to do with fucking NATO. Listen, but official Washington is done explaining anything, as you may have noticed. So instead, the very same foreign policy geniuses who brought slave markets to Libya went insane with rage. Not since we made fun of pregnant flight suits have they been this mad. Fox host unabashedly makes Putin's case, barked CNN's White House correspondent. Unabashedly! Yeah. Yeah, you don't give a fuck. I mean, like, I have seldom seen someone on regular broadcast cable um, looking to give Putin a taint, on, a taint hickey more than Tucker Carlson over the last couple of months. In a really weird, like, in a, in a way that it seems like something changed when he went over to Hungary and was dealing with having an interview with somebody from, uh, from Russia, apparently, that he was going to have on his show or follow Putin around and do a little puff piece about him. Since that point, he's been oddly, I mean, contrarian, even though he knows better. Shows how the disinformation successes of Russian intelligence extend way beyond Trump. Tucker's all in for Putin, noted Bill Kristol, a man who couldn't even run a small circulation magazine, but imagines he should run our country's foreign policy. Uh, you have one show. And a half. You're trying to. And then a former DNC contractor called Alexandra Chalupa announced that this show's opinions violated the law. This isn't journalism, she wrote. It, it's an ongoing FARA violation. Tucker Carlson needs to be prosecuted as an unregistered agent of the Russian Federation and treason under Article 3, Section 3, Clause 1 of the U.S. Constitution for aiding an enemy in hybrid warfare against the United States. A death penalty offense! What Alexandra Chalupa didn't mention, speaking of FARA violations, is that she herself has extensive personal ties to the Ukrainian government. In 2016, Chalupa contacted- Oh, you mean the democracy? Did Ukraine's embassy looking for dirt on Donald Trump's presidential campaign. Now she says that anyone who doesn't believe Americans should die for Ukraine must be sent to prison. Oh, that's not, that's not what you're saying. There's lots of people who don't think we should invade. Most of them don't. You think we should just let Russia take Ukraine no matter what. And it's none of our business. Even though they've asked for the help. Virginia Congressman. Which is effectively on purpose siding with Putin in this. Conley didn't go that far, but close. He called us right-wing agitators spewing Russian propaganda into millions of American homes like a virus. And then Congressman Eric Swallow of California, man who literally had sex with a Chinese spy. Uh, he doesn't know that for the record. The, the Chinese spy he's uh, talking about, um, the FBI contacted Eric Swalwell, said this woman who's been raising money for your campaign, we believe she's been put there by the Chinese government. He cut all ties with her, gave him all the information he had. And then magically she went back to China and never came back. But I, I, I don't know if Tucker Carlson has literally seen photos or video and if he has who is he literally talking to um in the ch in i guess in the chinese uh special services that is showing him this stuff or did he see it in hungary multiple times in very strange ways agreed with this carrying putin's water again he wrote on twitter which is true 
And then one of Barack Obama's speechwriters accused us of being, quote, on the side of ethno-nationalist authoritarianism. Oh, ethno-nationalism. So if you don't support fight... By the way, is this tied to something else or does he even mention Tucker in this? Is he just... This is just a... Is this supposed to be loosely attaching two ideas? We are potentially in the verge of a land war in Europe aimed at extinguishing democracy and sovereignty in the American right wing. is on the side of ethno-nationalist authoritarianism. That's where we're at. Um, why is that Tucker? Why is that... The show? I mean, there's definitely... Um, members of the American right wing that side with that stuff. Why is he taking this personally? And by the way, he considers himself as a journalist on Fair and Balanced Fox News, part of the American right wing. Again, the war on behalf of all white Ukraine against all white Russia, you, my friend, are a racist. And so on. So what's so interesting? Well, no, because Russia is an ethno-nationalist country not about Ukraine, it's about the expansion of that ethno-nationalist country. It doesn't matter that they're expanding into, remember the Nazis, the first country they took over was their own. And they were racists. They were ethno-nationalists. And they took over, they killed or purged anybody who didn't wasn't on board with the ethno-nationalist part. See how that works, fucko? Is that there was not a single argument, not a single idea in any of it. These aren't just Twitter trolls. Those are tweets. Have me on. I'll talk you out of it, asshole. These are people who imagine themselves foreign policy heavyweights. You imagine yourself a foreign policy heavyweight. Deep thinkers. Statesmen. But when challenged, all they could muster was name calling. They went ad hominem immediately because they had nothing else. Well, no, I would say that uh, the rest of the argument that they're having um, speaks for itself because it's obvious to anybody watching that it wasn't NATO expansion, a letter from 2008 that drove Putin to start amassing troops on the Ukrainian border. Anyone can see that. And our ongoing relationship with Ukraine, which was on really shaky ground under Trump, suddenly steadying under Biden, but in no aggressive way, just through regular support, and, you know, in general, that, that mixed with whatever Putin's plans are for the future is why he's amassed them. Not because of some direct aggressive action on the part of the United States or NATO or Europe in general. Again, uh, the right wing on the very same channel he's on is all day long saying that, you know, Trump was way hard on Putin, you know, because every sanction the Senate put, put on, Trump would wait until the last hour he legally could to impose them so these guys would have enough time to shuffle their money around and get out of the way so the sanctions would have as little impact as possible instead of input, you know, putting them on as soon as the bill is signed. And then you've got this argument that somehow NATO just for existing and, and Biden and Ukraine discussing the sovereignty of Ukraine because of its oil and gas reserves, which, by the way, are important to the functioning of Europe. And if Russia were to take those oil and gas reserves, they would basically have a stranglehold on the energy needs of Europe for the next decade. And therefore could politically manipulate those governments or, quite frankly, shut their lights off and kill a bunch of their people in a matter of weeks which would be a point of concern if you gave a fuck about human life. And again, this all came about because Putin, apropos of nothing, decided it was time. It's time. You got to, it's, you know, it's time to amass troops on the border. Last time, you know, when Biden was VP, we took Crimea. Let's give it another shot. So all those people are speaking in that context the geopolitical context of the reality of basically Russia, a country with a smaller, since we're talking about shit that's got fewer people than California, Russia has a smaller economy than California, has decided that one of the ways it keeps itself afloat and its oligarchs rich and fat and happy is by stealing the, the resources of other countries. It's doing it with Kazakhstan and Kazakhstan ousted the, the, the Russian friendly leader and, and has started siding with China in a bunch in the BRI because that's where the money was flowing from. And they've got deep shit in Kazakhstan. And that whole nonsense about they came in and helped out and left, 
is bullshit. China made them leave. And so Russia is looking at these two areas where if Kazakhstan is its own country, and it totally is, and can make deals with China and, you know, Uzbekistan and all, and Turkestan and all those areas, Turkmenistan, and can side, and Ukraine's by itself, they can basically scissor off a chunk of the country between the two of them, which is full of resources and aspect, and, uh, and reaches the Caspian Sea. There's real shit going on. And so what these people are talking about is, with all that context, this fucko has decided that, you know, we should just let them have it. Russia's in a bad spot. They're doing nothing but pump oil and gas. They're running out of it. They need it for themselves. And yet they need every dime that comes with it to keep the, the you know, Putin's entire group of friends afloat. So what do they need? They need the Ukrainian land and resources. So they're just going to take it. Old world, you know, theft by war. They're pathetic. That ought to worry you, though, because they may be pathetic. They're also very powerful. So in the end, it fell to poor Kamala Harris. No one is making a clear argument for war. No one is making an argument for war at all, fucko. To explain why we need to fight for the honor of Ukraine. And she did it on the Today Show, the Biden administration's forum for deep thoughts on foreign policy. Here's what she said. And on the subject of Ukraine, I will tell you that the president has been very clear and we as the United States are very clear. If Putin takes aggressive action, we are prepared to levy serious and severe costs, period. And I will tell you that part of the, the posture that we have taken is grounded in the respect and the value we place in sovereignty and territorial integrity. <laughs> reading her little talking points as vehemently as she can but the well no they they this is a functioning government so we we kind of get everybody on the same page when you do that instead of having like this scattershot bullshit that trump does you know because it's all great when mike pence comes out and acts all serious and flattens his lips and his eyes and you know says the president's taking every uh consideration and is uh, looking at every possible angle. And then Trump comes out and goes, why don't you stick a light bulb up your ass? Maybe that'll work. Uh, yeah, they, it, it's nice when the United States, as important as it is as a country, actually has uh, their messaging together. Just the emphasis we place, the value we place on territorial integrity, mm -hmm. borders, sovereignty, the right to determine who comes into your country and when. That's the- Yeah, we have a CBP. People are, are ejected if they don't come in here. If they have asylum claims, they're met. Like, this is just, I mean, I know it, this is like an easy conflation he's trying to make, but it's really pitiful. From Kamala Harris, the lifelong open borders activist. So how should... No, that's uh, the open border stuff that he's talking about or she's talking about is basically uh, a green card system where migrant workers who live in Mexico can come over, work, and go home instead of having to sneak in and kind of stay below the radar for decades to be able to live. By the way, the farmers in those areas want that too. Putin handled this. Well, Putin had a better imagination. Apparently he doesn't. He'd paint the Russian tanks now massed on the Ukrainian border with the slogan, no person is illegal. What would Kamala Harris say to that? On what grounds would she tell Russians who just want a better life with their families in Ukraine that they can't come to Ukraine? Well, I think the tanks are the problem, dumbass. I mean, this is a lazy analogy. I, I, do you imagine how much time they spent winding up this BS in the prep room before the show? Oh, look, we'll do this angle about how it's the same thing. You know, hundreds of tanks, well-armed soldiers, anti-aircraft missiles. It's the same as migrant families with two-year-olds walking through a desert trying to get a job. You know what I mean? What's the fucking difference? And z shazam a shazow. If the Russians just quoted Emma Lazarus, Kamala Harris would have to back off and support them and their voting rights in Ukraine. But unfortunately for them, the Russians are just too literal for this. When they invade a country, they just go ahead and call it an invasion. Yeah, they don't just like, they don't just send Guatemalans, Hondurans, Mexicans, Brazilians, and Haitians that have left of their own free will 
across a border to try and get work who are the majority rejected and sent back, which wouldn't be a very good invasion. I will give you that. But you still have to wonder, invasion or not, why is any of this a... Prof By the way, look at this shit. Disaster awaits. Democracy is not worth fighting for, kids. That's the message from Tucker tonight. The hell with democracy. If anybody asks us for help, not our problem. It's And if you try, it's a disaster. P.S. Uh, he's been in the, like... The most, like, the jingoistic network for two decades. Sounds concern of ours. Why would you even consider risking American lives? Or We're not. Spending billions of dollars to stop it. To stop what? Oh, are we going back to Paul Manafort and Donald Trump removing offensive weapons for Ukraine from the RNC platform in 2016? There are multiple borders wars underway around the world. There are multiple just on the continent of Africa right now, there always have been. Many are dying in those wars. Mm -hmm. And yet Kamala Harris is not agitating for American troops to Congo. That's because uh, none of those troops intend to move further into or have the capability to move further into the greater continent. We're talking about civil wars around questionable borders that exist in the first place, not recognized by both sides. How come? We can only speculate about that. <laughs> I'm sure you'd be for it, though. What we do know is that the administration's Russia policy would only make sense if your goal was to gravely hurt the United States of America. Huh? Is that, is that, that's what it is? Yeah, that's, that's what Biden wants to do is get us into another long form war. That's why he just got us out of one. Already, we have spent nearly $4 billion in aid to Ukraine over the last few years, much of it for weapons. The mm -hmm. point of this is to tweak Russia and, if necessary, to kill Russians. Uh, no, it is not. <laughs> it is to defend Ukraine if the R Russians decide to tweak a few Ukrainians. Our elites feel very superior about this morally. They brag about it constantly. Uh, by the way, you're an elite. You're a trust fund kid. You're on cable news for God knows why. And you consider yourself an elite in every conversation you've ever mentioned about yourself. And what you're doing is you're uh, uh, apparently the elites on Fox News side with Putin. So it's an up, it's a win for them. But what about the cost to the rest of us and to our country? China like, is the preeminent threat to the United States. Nothing comes close to the threat that China poses. Right, but there's no territorial linkage even between Taiwan and the United States. It's like it's not like Taiwan's attached to fucking Hawaii, asshole. Like it's a consideration, but territorially, do you have any fucking idea how far they have to go to even matter geographically with us? Here's the truth: the U.S. military, impressive as it is, is not big enough to engage meaningfully simultaneously in Europe and in Asia. Can't it doesn't have to, nor would it. First of all, we would uh, work with NATO in that, and our carrier group would do plenty of damage without ever having to go anywhere near that place. Um, we, we have the NATO support there, and then around Taiwan and with China, we have Japan and Australia to work with, and India. And Japan, I got news for you, could take out the Chinese Navy alone with just their defensive ships without even any help from us which they would get at the same time so our attention to ukraine by definition detracts from our attention to china no it doesn't we're not in a military exercise with china at all and again there's a difference here this is a lot closer to the movement into hong kong for example which is terrifying and horrible but Taiwan is not physically attached. It's a much bigger deal. Russia and Ukraine are physically attached. And Ukraine is physically attached to the rest of Europe. Ask the Swedes. But worse and more dangerous than that, more dangerous than anything, 
It and drives he, the Russians into an alliance of convenience of necessity with the Chinese government. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. The Chinese want the Russian uh, oil fields. They want the Russian land. And the Russians want the Chinese land. They just don't want any people on it. That, I mean, again, did, can you read some history books that don't involve crayons? So here you have our two biggest rivals united. United. Yeah, they're totally united right now. I, oh God, hold on one second. Um, Let's see, hold on. Um, oops. Oh, I see this is where he's getting in a bunch. Yeah. There you go. This is the, uh, let's see, can I, there you go. Take this one. Before I go to here, donk. There you go. Oops, play. This is way back in December of 2021. So, China and Russia show solidarity, but likely won't support each other militarily. Analysts say. You think? China, Chinese President Xi Jinping met his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin virtually for the second time this year on Wednesday. The meeting came just days after the U.S. and another group of seven major economies condemned Russia's military buildup of aggressive rhetoric. I'm oh, sorry, rhetoric. Listen to me. Rhetoric towards Ukraine. Beijing likely wants to ensure that if it were to take military action against Taiwan, the Russians wouldn't do anything. That's it. See that? Wouldn't do anything. Said Angela Stent, a professor at Georgetown University. I think both sides recognize Putin knows that if he invaded Ukraine, China isn't going to send military help. They're not siding with each other. International pressure may have pushed China and Russia to close together, but not enough for the two countries to send military support to each other, U.S.-based analysts say. Um, Wednesday, just days, okay. Uh, Beijing and Moscow are forging closer ties because both governments view deeper bilateral cooperation as beneficial to their respective national interests and not primarily because of an ideological affinity between Xi and Putin. They want their borders to stay the way they are so that they can keep their borders the way they want. But it has nothing to do, hold on, let me see if I can blow this back up, um, with the actual military support of each other. And so this farcical idea that somehow we're going to be fighting the Russians and the Chinese, they're going to coordinate their attacks on these two pieces of land simultaneously is bullshit. Because NATO itself without us can push back on the on the Russian troops. Russia's entire military budget is $66 billion a year. The NATO budget is somewhere in the order of what? What's the, here, hold on. Let me look up what the latest uh, NATO military budget. Let's see if this throws in. Uh, uh, civil budget. Um, 1.56 billion, 289 million. Sorry. So we'll, let me look at this real quick. Yeah. So they get that on their own for just the overarching. All member countries contribute to these budgets and then we give in military stuff. So the guiding part is 1.9 billion. And let me see what the other one is. Hold on. Uh, Russian, Russian total military budget. This is all their stuff all over the world. Uh, the official budget is 48. It's down from 90 in, in 2012. Why Russian, here you go, uh, much higher than commonly understood, as is China's, right. Cool. So, uh, the U.S. Budget, military budget, I don't have to tell anybody, is around the order of $784 billion a year. 
not simply against our military, but against our currency. When the U.S. dollar is displaced as the world's reserve currency, which is not going to happen, and when that happens, this country will become poor overnight. Yeah, it's what do you think it's going to be? The yuan, the ruble, and no, it won't. This, what you're watching now, will be one of the reasons why it happened. No, it won't. What the fuck is he talking about? As a matter of fact, these kind of uh, these kind of fights are one of the reasons why the U.S. maintains its dominance as a world's currency. It's one of the things we kind of have to push back at because war adventurism doesn't seem to hurt it at all. We were fucking dumping money into Afghanistan for 20 fucking years and it didn't do anything. So it's hard to imagine anything more significant or destructive than what these people are doing right now. It's not just... I mean, this is just cartoonishly bullshit. About Ukraine, it's about our future. Hey, Sean Hannity here. That's, yeah, that's the end. That's the, that he bails out on that. This is, so what did we see in this multiple argument? Okay, first of all, what the fuck do we care about Ukraine for anyways? We, we've been caring about Ukraine for a while. Now we're picking a fight with Putin, which he doesn't want to have. Look how mean, look at how mean and stern and it looks like Clint Eastwood in, uh, you know, one of the latter films. Just, uh, and poor Putin over here. Look at him. I don't, I don't want, I don't tell everything. Um, and then we're moving close to war because of Ukraine. That's the, look at, look at the Chiron. Then, um, war machine. Look at the United States is like, holy shit. The, the U.S. Capitol is a war machine. And then there are a lot of people who want a conflict in the war machine, I presume. Then, uh, continuing on with that bullshit for a while. And then disaster awaits. Permanent Washington is itching for a war. Permanent Washington. So the deep state. It's what he's... Permanent Washington means the deep state. So, you know, this is his way of saying derp state without actually getting caught saying it. And then boom, and helicopters. And ah, remember Afghanistan? And helicopters in Afghanistan? You just saw a guy fall out of a helicopter in Afghanistan. And go boom, this bullshit. Um, right. So, and then, where do we go here? Oops, I gotta go over to this uh, this screen, sorry. Then we go over here, him bitching about people, calling him out for his bullshit on Twitter, like a grown-up. And then disaster hits again. Oh, oh, no! And then Kamala Harris responds by actually saying exactly what everyone else in the administration is saying. But that's supposed to prove a point that she's on a talking point. Um... And then uh, more disaster awaits, more disaster awaits, severe costs. Look at him yelling. Look at her right behind him, telling him what to yell, I guess. This is the idea she's whispering in his ear. This is how they build graphics at Fox, by the way. None of this benefits America in any way. Boy, but uh, not doing anything and letting Putin take Ukraine sure does benefit him in a big way. We are pushed. Oh, look at this. We are pushing Russia into the arms of China. Oh dear. And uh, we have a do we have a Facebooker in here that says that Trump economy was great, lowest food rise, jobs were at the higher minimum wage. That's not that's not true. Electrical bills the highest I've ever seen in the home in the last four seven years. That's post uh, that's due to his response in to COVID. Green video on the line of the dark stuff with the TV on cable with us. your cable bill? <laughs> Jesus Christ, first world problems. President's wasted millions and billions of dollars on whatnot for the American citizens who are all my tax bank dollars going to the illegal immigrants. Oh, I never got a stimulus check from the... Why not? You should have. Oh, oh, I see. Because you're not actually really who you say you are. Good times. Um, what a weird long diatribe. Um, yeah, so what what you're seeing here is, is basically a psyop of cartoon, like frames with this like messaging underneath and him basically saying yeah you know what fuck democracy yep the end of the arms of china that's what that's what's happening it couldn't be that russia is a wilting country because of who runs it that has been str putting a stranglehold on the russian people for decades because they've got no ideas 
It's it that it's not them. It's not their lack of initiative and shit like that, and the fact that they're just what a what a great place to like rip off all of my fellow Russians. It's not because of that. It's because America. It, it, it in two thousand eight. NATO sent a note to Ukraine, if you like me, check this box. And now because Russia is is boiling inside, because their inflation, their gas prices, their social unrest is worse than ours, and so is China's, so both of them are saber-rattling stuff that apparently the populace will like. We will take back Ukraine. We're going to take back Taiwan. It's the same shit. Boring. And this asshole thinks that the big story is that we're going to get in trouble. Oh no. We're going to get in big trouble. 